We keep doing these segments that are called, they're not embarrassed, right? They're about people who have, have lied or been blatantly hypocritical in their opposition to policies like the stimulus and health reform. The reason we keep calling these segments, they're not embarrassed, is because that's supposed to describe a problem <laughs> in that people should be embarrassed when they get caught lying or when they get caught showing blatant hypocrisy. But there is a problem here. They are not. They're not. And as the, as the health reform fight draws to a close, people who want health reform to not happen are becoming even less afraid and even less embarrassed about lying about health reform and about demonstrating rank hypocrisy about health reform. This problem is not getting any better. It turns out that our diagnosis was not at all a cure. Last night, we highlighted Republican Senator Orrin Hatch's untruths about the health reform process. He wrote an op-ed that appeared to have no connection to the fact-based world most of us live in. Senator Hatch, in response to that segment, did not dispute anything that we said about him on last night's show. Senator Hatch did tweet on the matter, not to correct me, just to say that he thought that my criticizing him was a, quote, wonderful badge of honor. To be clear, what I said Orrin Hatch did... Um, was lie. He says he's wearing that as a wonderful badge of honor. I wasn't expressing my opinion about Senator Hatch. I wasn't talking about his opinions about health reform. I was catching him in a lie and documenting that he in fact lied. It turns out in response to that, he's very proud. Weird, I know. Uh, but it's not just Orrin Hatch. Uh, the Republican leader in the Senate, Mitch McConnell, responded to the president's speech on health reform today uh, with this whopper of his own. Virtually every time reconciliation has been used, the results were bipartisan support. <laughs> bipartisan support, he says, virtually every time, virtually every time. Except for uh, this time when it was a 51-50 party line vote, or that other time when it was a 50-49 party line vote, or that other time when it was a 52-47 party line vote. You know, actually, if you look at the past two decades of using reconciliation in the United States Congress, if you look at the last two decades, the majority of times it has been used, it has been used for party line votes. So Mitch McConnell told a lie about that today. I, I, I do not take pleasure in saying this, but some of the most prominent politicians opposed to health reform are just lying about health reform, lying about the U.S. Senate. They're not embarrassed about being caught in the lies. They're not even embarrassed about taking brave stands against their own records, their own positions, in order to try to stop health reform from succeeding. Take, for example, Republican Senator Judd Gregg of New Hampshire. Mr. Gregg went on the Fox News Channel today to decry the use of reconciliation to pass health reform. It's bad policy, and to do it this way is to really railroad uh, the American people and the Congress. Reconciliation, railroading the American people and the Congress, railroading them. That new Judd Gregg really is not going to be happy uh, when we introduce him to the old Judd Gregg. We are using the rules of the Senate here. That's what they are, Senator. Reconciliation is a rule of the Senate. All this rule of the Senate does is allow a majority of the Senate to take a position and pass a piece of legislation. Support that position. Now, is there something wrong with majority rules? I don't think so. I don't think so. Wait until this Judd Gregg hears about what that other Judd Gregg just said, huh? In, in their desperation to try to stop health reform by any means necessary, senators opposed to health reform have repeatedly decided to take brave stands against themselves. Now, th this, this desperation is a manifestation of the mass freakout by opponents of health reform over the fact that health reform is close to a done deal. And it's not just the lying and the hypocrisy by politicians who really ought to know better. It's also um, this. Code red! This is not a website that we here at The Rachel Maddow Show created today in order to satirize the Republican freakout over health reform passing. This is their actual website. Code red. Look at the siren. You see the siren? Alerting America to the Democrats' health care takeover! Exclamation point. This is, a, this is a new project of the National Republican Congressional Committee. Code red. Code red. Everybody freak out. Another symptom of this freakout is one that actually makes me upset. 
Uh, you know how in, in baseball, if you intentionally bump an umpire, you get slapped with a pretty big suspension. On the street, if you assault a police officer, you end up getting a way worse sentence than if you assaulted a person who was not a police officer. The idea is that, not that these people are so much more important than regular citizens, but these folks, in doing their jobs, represent the system itself. They represent the commitment that we in America have to living within some agreed-upon rules. People in our society whose job is to uphold the rules can't be attacked. That's sort of an American value in everything from our criminal justice system to sports. Which is why even jaded Beltway insiders recoiled today when Senate Republicans started to attack the Senate parliamentarian. Yeah. This is basically the Senate's ump, the guy who calls balls and strikes on how the Senate operates. He hasn't even ruled on anything related to health care yet, but Republicans are preemptively bullying the parliamentarian in terms of how he will rule on procedural matters related to health care. Republican Senator Jim DeMint warning, I've got concerns. And telling Politico.com, quote, I would think that reconciliation would make or break the perception of his objectivity. My friend Senator Orrin Hatch warning, he'd be crazy not to follow the rules and to rule properly. If he didn't do that, he'd lose all respect. Another brave anonymous Republican just throwing the evidence-free insult that Politico duly transcribed, quote, I think most people don't trust him. You know, I would normally show you a picture of the guy that they're attacking at this point, but I think that he actually deserves to be left out of this. He's the parliamentarian. He's a guy who's doing his job. He hasn't done anything yet in this fight, let alone having done anything wrong. The reason that health reform opponents are, are, are freaking out, code red, code red, attacking the parliamentarian, lying, denying their own records on subjects like this, the reason they're freaking out is because this process is almost done. They're desperate. And it's not just my opinion that it is almost done. President Obama today made clear that this really is almost over. We began our push to reform health insurance last March in this room uh, with doctors and nurses who know the system best. And so it's fitting to be joined by all of you as we bring this journey to a close. Every idea has been put on the table. Every argument has been made. Everything there is to say about health care has been said. <laughs> and just about everybody has said it. So now's the time to make a decision about how to finally reform health care so that it works. So at stake right now is not just our ability to solve this problem, but our ability to solve any problem. The American people want to know if it's still possible for Washington to look out for their interests and their future. They are waiting for us to act. They are waiting for us to lead. And as long as I hold this office, I intend to provide that leadership. I do not know how this plays politically, but I know it's right. And so I ask Congress to finish its work, and I look forward to signing this reform into law. Joining us now is Democratic Senator Sherrod Brown of Ohio. Senator Brown, thanks very much for making time for us tonight. Good to be back. Thanks. Uh, in terms of the logistics here, the House would need to pass the Senate version of health reform first. They are reportedly a little reluctant to do so until they are satisfied that the Senate really does have the votes to pass the last fixes to the bill via reconciliation. Can you assuage those concerns tonight? Well, uh, yeah, I think there's, there's no question in my mind that we get somewhere between 52 and 57 votes, something like that, for a reconciliation that actually improves the bill. And, you know, I, I listened, Rachel, to your, to all the Republicans and the, you know, the, the old Judd Gregg and the new Judd Gregg and the old Mitch and all, and all that. You know, I, I, I try to understand them better and put myself in their shoes. And I, I think they look back in history and they understand that they had to explain away their opposition to Medicare for two or three decades and it cost them at the polls. And I, I think Republicans, the ones that are more that are more have more insight than some of the others perhaps understand that 
they vote no on this, they're going to be explaining it 10 and 20 years from now as a real bad vote because this, pro, this, this health care bill that we're passing is going to work for the overwhelming majority of Americans. And so they're, they're sort of protesting too, protesteth too much in some sense. And I think they know they have, you know, this, this may help them short term in one election, this opposition. But I think they know as this bill takes effect and, and helps people, helps small business, make sure nobody's thrown off for pre-existing conditions or the caps on coverage when they got real sick and it was real expensive and people back in 2010 lost in their insurance. That won't happen in 2015 and 20. I think they know that this is a troublesome situation they're putting themselves in, so they want to keep pushing back, keep delaying, keep stopping this any way they can. Yeah, it seems to me like in terms of political calculus for the Republicans, the worst situation is if the bill passes and they all vote no for it in the extent with the expectation that health reform is going to actually improve things for average americans and improve the overall sa economic situation with regard to health care but senator mcconnell today started talking about not wanting to tip his hand as to what he had in mind for stopping health reform i understand their desperation to stop it do you know what they're going to pull out of their hat to try to well, kill it I, I, just, 